Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this session of Tourism Updates webinar in association with SA Tourism. I'm Natasha Schmidt, um, Editorial Director of Tourism Updates, and I'll be facilitating this session. We're joined today by SA Tourism Acting CEO, Stembi Sordlamini, TVCSA CEO, Chafiwa Chavengwa, and TVCSA Board Member and SATSA CEO, David Frost. Today, our panel is discussing the recent uprise of xenophobic violence and its impact on South Africa as a tourist destination. You're welcome to send through your questions during the session. We're using the chat window. Just type in your question and hit enter, and we will try to get to as many questions as possible. Um, to, yeah, so the xenophobic attacks, this is a social issue. It's not a tourism one, but it has become a tourist one because of the significant impact it's had on the country's image. And we are here to discuss how do we address this? Um, how do we change the discourse and make sure that tourists know they are welcome in South Africa? Um, and let's have a constructive discussion around this. Um, I, who wants to take it from there? Thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for having us. Indeed, uh, what has been happening uh, in our country for the past couple of weeks has uh, been rather unfortunate. And you are right that uh, though it might not have been tourism related, it has a huge impact on how the world sees us as, as South Africa and how we see ourselves, basically. Um, you, you see the tourism brand becomes a, an integral part of this discussion, given that there's a lot of uh, media coverage that we've had on what has been happening in, in, in the country. In fact, when the whole thing started, we were doing a roadshow, a global roadshow in the Central Europe and the UK, uh, key source markets, where we went to, to meet uh, uh, you know, face to face with our trade partners, as well as our media partners, the people who help us create the destination, the people who help us actually sell the destination. So, of course, sitting that side of the world and uh, reading what's going on in South Africa, it, 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 it certainly brought a bit of confusion in the market. Uh, we've done a, an assessment, uh, we've done a media monitoring to try and understand what's the talkability, what's the reach of this messaging. And I must say that a lot of people um, uh, did uh, have sight of what was going on, um, whether or not they understand that these are social issues or to yes. tourism related, it, it remains to be seen. Mm. However, sitting here, I need to mention that uh, touching base with a trade on the ground, mm. because when these things were happening, we've got teams that are stationed in various uh, regions. Uh, one of the things that I can confirm is that uh, in the continent, particularly our air markets, we've seen a, a, a lot of cancellation. Trade was telling us that people are canceling. In Central Europe, where we were, we've seen a lot of cancellations. So our trade did confirm that following those uh, you know, reports and media statements, uh, they've seen uh, their clients canceling uh, their trips into South Africa. So definitely, it is a matter that we need to um, discuss like this and find solution to it. The most important thing is how do we as a destination take charge of the narrative that goes out there. Mm -hmm. um, it is happening, it's a fact, it's a reality. Uh, however, there's a whole lot of other positive things that are happening in our country. However, we have not found a way to actually tell the positive story so that we begin to, call it, you know, to, to take charge of what is the narrative that goes out there. Uh, besides building the narrative, it sort of provides the context. So when an incident like this happens, there is context to it. People understand it, uh, you know, a lot better than, uh, you know, f you know, getting it without any other positive narrative that is out there about the country. Yeah. Look, I, I think what has happened, you know, um, <clears throat> this is Chief Pio from the TBCSA. I think what has happened, you know, it's a disgrace, you know, what what you know, we've become as a country, and it is something that, uh, you know, when when you look at you know, futuristically, you know, you look at our prospects as a country, we keep going forward and then we go back yeah. 10 steps. Yeah. So we've been trying to move from this issue of being perceived as a an unsafe destination for many, many years. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, as much as we have worked around it and we've managed to, you know, grow our numbers around, around you know, the issues of safety and security, uh, you know, the communication has changed. You know, I remember 20 years ago when, when you have issues of safety and security, it was difficult for those things to get out of the country. It was going to be if it's, it's something that's huge that gets covered by you know, international media that, you know, it then gets out. Today, with a phone, the message gets out. And then, you know, regardless of whether we can contextualize, you know, where these things are happening in terms of whether it's happening in one street in Joburg mm -hmm. or a little portion of Soweto or wherever it may be, people don't care. You know, they look at this, you know, in a way that, uh, you know, it's a whole country, we are unstable, you know, we are not a place where tourists want, want to be. And it's, it's a message that we have taken to the Minister of Tourism to say, you know, this is something that we need to, to focus on. Uh, it's a message that, you know, we have taken to the presidency to say, you know, this doesn't bode well for brand SA. Uh, it actually takes us back and something has to be done about this uh, so that, you know, tourism can be able to thrive, you know, uh, in this space. So it is something that, you know, from from our side as an industry, you know, I know that, you know, we are despondent and, you know, it's discouraging. Mm. It is something that, you know, when you're looking at your bookings, you know, you can see that you, your numbers are going backwards. Mm. But it's something that we need to overcome. We need to be resilient mm. uh, and we need to come up with plans, you know, to really counter the message that's, that's going out there. Mm. To say that, you know, although we have all these challenges, you know, we've had some of these challenges for the past 25 years. Yes. Uh, although we do have these challenges, you know, they say they say in light at the end of the tunnel. We only have one South Africa to live in. We only have one South Africa to market and sell. And we only have one South Africa to derive our, you know, livelihood from, you know, as, as part of the tourism community. And I think that, you know, we need to start, you know, sending positive messages. We need to start, you know, to, to come together instead of, you know, taking this message, this negative messages further. We understand the context better. We understand, you know, where this is coming from. Uh, we live in this country and we need to figure out a way of communicating positively, uh, you know, about some of the things that we're doing in the country, you know, that contribute positively to tourism. So it's something that as much as, you know, it has to be dealt with, you know, we know it's a government issue, we know it's a social issue uh, in terms of, you know, uh, how do we make sure that people, you know, get jobs and also we need to educate people. That you know, when you go and, and and start these things, you know there are consequences to this. Yes. We talk about creating jobs. We are not going to create jobs if we have a negative image. People are not going to want to invest into the country. So I think it's up to us, you know, as a trade to start, uh, you know, talking to our communities where we operate, talking to you know if we are attractions, talking to the people around the attractions, so they can start to understand the benefits of tourism. Mm. They can understand that you know although you know, they may not see themselves as a direct beneficiary. Indirectly, they benefit as part of the community. And it's a message that we need to, to take as a trade, you know, take it out there and make sure that, you know, we start to turn around uh, uh, this, uh, this negative image that we have. It's going to take a long time. Uh, you know, we're hoping that, you know, these things don't, you know, again, rear its ugly head and we are, you know, back again to square one to talk about it. Uh, we're hoping that we move forward from, from, from here. But us as the community within tourism, we need to start to take that, uh, the positive message to our own community and to the trade, you know, overseas. Hi, this is uh, David Frost just coming in here. And I'm looking at some of the questions that have been posted by um, people signing into the webinar. And a lot of them are around the sort of practical tools about how we can uh, correct and deal with the message. Um, so let me let me try and address those to an extent. Um, I think the good news is that there is certainly an awareness um, from our public sector uh, partner side that we do need to to generate messages, and we're working very closely with SA Tourism as well as with our provincial tourism colleagues. And uh, from a SATSA perspective, in with Wesgrow in particular, um, there was you know obviously the whole issue of Mount Nelson and. Uh, the uh, the sort of troops into into areas of Cape Town, etc. So on the back of that, we've been working very closely together, and there and there there are corrective messages being being um, developed and put out. And I but I just some practical advice. I mean, firstly, don't 
and you know, I say this guardedly, please don't try and respond to every single inquiry. Mm -hmm. Try and bounce the message back to us at SATSA. We are fielding a numerous questions and we can help you with with um, uh, uh, guiding your replies in 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 that um, perspective. At the same level, when we have some pos any positive news, and this is not positive news about your product, it's positive destination news. Please, um, that paints the destination in in a good light. Please share that with us. Um, in any international articles that you come across that are that are negative, please send those through to us because it, it allows us to document and 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 form responses responses um, to those. Finally, in terms of um, any further disruptions going forward, I urge everybody um, who's listening is and and that are SATSA members, please download the SATSA app because we are able through the SATSA app to get real time information about. Um, impediments, service delivery protests, any 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 issue that that poses a threat and a danger to um, to sort of tourists. So as SATSA, we act, act as an interface. But I want to assure people that we we are working very very closely with uh, SA Tourism, and there are statements being generated um, almost on a on a on a daily basis that we can then. Put out and and uh, and share with um, share with members and Natasha. Obviously, we as Satsa have a membership base, yes. but we also you know can work through Tourism Update Absolutely. to get them through to the broader tourism yes. um, industry that's not um, that are that are not Satsa members. Yeah. So um, and I do think you know it's there is a healthy um, and a, a frequent dialogue in the tourism industry about mm -hmm. this narrative and there are positive messages coming mm -hmm. through and um you know in a time when people do feel disempowered it's easy to be negative mm -hmm. um but there are things to do to be able to change the conversation mm -hmm. how do we move that conversation though from um a conversation that's happening within tourism mm -hmm. and the tourism community how do we take that mainstream how do we get it into the public sphere because mm -hmm. that's where it needs to be mm -hmm. You see, you, you're quite correct because there are a lot of initiatives on the ground and conversations happening in various, uh, you know, platforms. But we have not sort of been able to actually consolidate that into one so that we, we bring it to the, you know, public domain, like you say. And I think two weeks ago, the Portfolio Committee on Tourism and Pol Portfolio Committee on, to uh, on Police yes. did meet. Yes. It actually shows how government, have, uh, you know, has taken the, the, you know, the importance of um, um, safety or the issue of safety, yes. uh, uh, you know, and, and put it on top of its of, of its agenda. So those are the, some of the things that we need to begin to talk about. Mm -hmm. It was not just a discussion. What are the outcomes of those discussions? Who is going to do what mm -hmm. at what point? So we discuss at, at a point of discussion we should be able to put together in an action plan mm. that is communicated publicly so that everybody is able to actually uh, monitor whether the things that we've agreed upon mm. are being dealt with mm. i mean there's another question there uh, which says we thought uh, the safety monitors have been deployed in johannesburg yes. i mean right now currently um, the department of tourism is training 1450 safety monitors some of them have already been deployed uh, you know, at the table mountain, mm -hmm. uh, which is was was beginning to be a, a quite a, a, a serious situation of mm -hmm. uh, with tourists uh, being attacked at tourism at, 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 at table mountain. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the stories that we should be talking about. I mean, uh, earlier on, uh, David was talking about the the, the, the initiatives that uh, the industry has done, mm -hmm. the app that they've now developed mm -hmm. to ensure that they communicate with uh, their tour operators. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that they can alert each other when you know some criminal uh, you know elements are, are creeping up. Mm -hmm. I believe that if we actually communicate these small initiative, you know, enough and bring them to the fore mm -hmm. for the public to know what's going on, mm -hmm. everybody starts playing their part mm -hmm. because that's the, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And I think what we need to do is yes, it's not a discourse that has to be in tourism. It's a discourse that needs to include other you know func func functionaries in 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 in, in our government. Mm -hmm. And we've got to find a way to use media as a channel mm -hmm. where these good things, these discussions, these uh, initiatives uh, um, are communicated to the public so that we know. Yes, 
Yes. Yeah. Look, you know, you're quite correct. I think that uh, we we have to start educating the media at large. Mm. That is not all doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, you know, if you go and read our whole newspapers, every day you go online, you go to our newspapers, you know, you, you swear, if you don't live here, you would swear that, you know, we all are going to die mm -hmm. the next day. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality that we have. And, uh, you know, we need to start, you know, really turning around the messages. Things that are happening in this country also do happen in other countries. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, you know, not that is an excuse. We shouldn't give an excuse for things that we don't want to happen in our own country. Mm -hmm. So it's something that needs to be to be to be taken care of from the, you know, mainstream, you know, communication to say news is not only about the negatives. It's also about the positives, because when when the positive is happening, you hardly see it. Mm -hmm. And it's something that, you know, we perhaps, you know, need to sit down with the media houses, mm -hmm. you know, to say, you know, what are the good things that are happening in this country? How can we communicate, you know, those good things? Because mm -hmm. otherwise, when you hear negative news, if I'm a tourist and I arrive and I hear all the negative things, I will be so scared. Mm -hmm. And the last thing we want is for tourists to be scared when they arrive here. And I know that, you know, the guys that are on the road with the tourists, you know, they have a hard time, you know, always explaining what, what, what do they mean, mm -hmm. you know, by, you know, what's going on in the country. Because... If you look at you know the troubles that we have, mm. you know they happen in a particular places, mm. you know at a particular time. Mm. If it's job, I remember when we were in London, we we're talking about protests, mm. and the guys turn around they say, "Well, there are protests in London," mm. but it's how they are contextualized. Mm. You know, you find that it's a protest in a street mm. in London. It's not the whole of city of London. Mm. It's it's in a particular area and yes. for a particular. You know, and I mean, for us, our protests are not the same as the other guys. And I would admit that because our protests, when you see them coming down the road, you want to go to the other street. Mm -hmm. That has been the nature of this country for, for many, many years. Yes. And I think that, you know, we, we ought to take that message, you know, to the mainstream and make sure that, you know, we contextualize the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. We make sure that they're understood properly by tourists mm -hmm. and to make sure that, you know, for tourists, when they arrive in this country, Majority of this pro of this uh, uh, problems or challenges that we have, you know, don't really touch them. Mm. But that's another topic for another you know day. That you know we need to clean up our streets and make sure that people can walk around safely. But we're still a little bit far from that, and we've been far from that for the past twenty five years. Mm. And it's something that we need to to work on as a country, you know, going forward. But I think that we we have to be able to take um, you know our message mainstream. To talk the positives and is the trade that can talk the positives when when people hear of positive things share yes. let's share far and wide yeah. that we're doing something positive let's yes. get something positive trending you know started by the tourism industry mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you know people can see that you know what as much as we have these challenges mm -hmm. there's good news and i think that we can do it all of us mm -hmm. and I, I think that someone asked you what are the practical things that they need to do mm -hmm. let's start sharing positive news mm -hmm. Let's start to control what we can control, because there are certain things that we can we cannot control quickly. Uh, we need government intervention. It takes a little bit of time. As much as we can go and complain, and we can put the issues on the table, as, you know, it's a process, you know, with government. And from the TBCSA side, we've been working closely with government to really solve those issues and to make sure that you know we we, we get resolutions that are favorable to the industry. Those who will continue to do uh, to ensure that you know. Uh, our trading environment is better than before. And it's something that we're committed to, to lobby government, to make sure that they understand exactly where we are, you know, from the tourism point of view. But let's do what we can do from, from individuals. Let's promote, you know, all those positive stories, things that affect, you know, the communities, things that affect uh, the environment, you know, good news that's happening across the country. If we all do that, uh, we should be able to have, you know, some positive things going forward. I also just want to, you know, come in and, and 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 make the point that we need to, whilst this is all going on and and we are we are grappling with the realities of the fallout around around the uh, the recent events. We we need to, as a tourism industry, and this is all of us, we need to stick to the knitting because these things will pass. We have a government that realizes this is not cool. We have a TBCSA that is far more robust uh, than it's ever been before. We are having discussions at the highest level and pennies are dropping. 
about the role of tourism. Equally, the roadshow that we've just been on is, is an incredibly powerful uh, um, initiative. It's the first time that we've gone out together as both the public and the private sector to actually engage the market to develop strategies jointly. And we will continue to do this. We have a next leg coming up in October. We will be going to North America. We need to, we need to continue to actually... Uh, you know, plow that furrow that this is a desirable tourism destination. And I think Jafiwa made the point when we were overseas that despite all of this, there are thousands of tourists arriving every day and are still having holidays in this country. So we need to we need to look for the positive news. It may it may well refine our conversations when we are on the next leg of the roadshow. Um you know, I, my, my chairman sent me a, 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 an article from the Daily Telegraph that uh, covered the recent events. And he said, but I thought you'd just seen the Daily Telegraph people in London. And indeed, we had. But we saw the travel section, Jeez. you know, to talk about good news stories. We had a great positive interaction with them. They, we, we, we were able to sort of almost shift the narrative with the people who write about travel. Mm. The article in the Daily Telegraph is the political correspondent. So we need to, and, and it's, I'm just thinking on the hoof now, we need to, when we go and engage, we need to get in and also speak to the political editors of big uh, overseas publications to also talk about how the uh, the sort of narrative is is cast. Unfortunately, we also deal with quite a, quite a virulent social media space where everything goes viral. And there have been a number of, and, and maybe still Chief can come in now, there have been a number of reports that have actually are, are, are fake, but they, 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 they spin around the world and the damage is done. So retrospectively, we can, we can say they're fake and try and point them out, but unfortunately, the damage is done. The important thing is to have the proper conversations, to keep plowing the furrow and to keep um, focusing on 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 the positive news i'm i'm confident that you know whilst these are serious issues i think that we do not have an unsympathetic government to the impact that these are having on on our economy mm. yeah. i see th there's also a question as to what was the outcome or what 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 are the uh, customers saying mm. um in central europe and, and, and uk i think it's important for me to just put that context to say the reason why we went uh, into we, we undertook the roadshow um is that we, we were at a point where we're saying look the target is out there there's a 21 million target that has been put for 2030 by the president over and above the 21 million we've got now to chase the two two million jobs much needed jobs because we woke up one morning and 30 percent of unemployment was facing facing us so what the, the the most important message that we were driving and the thing that we were trying to find out there is how do we grow the business? Because mm. remember, we've identified these key markets where we're going to actually tap the growth, get the growth from. And we've got our top three markets and we've got other emerging markets such as China, India, and, and so forth and so on. Mm. So in there, one of the questions that we asked our trade is, what is it that we need to do as a destination to ensure that we unlock the, the growth potential that mm. we see? Interesting things came out. Um, you know, from a destination point of view, is a matter that we were talking about right now as to how do we deal with the safety and security uh, uh, issue of tourists. And from there, they were not saying, look, uh, uh, you know, crime doesn't happen. They were saying, how do we then ensure that we help the tourism board to, you know, uh, communicate a positive messaging around the destination, particularly to the consumers? The second thing that that came out, um, and, and I'm sure Chief and, 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 and David can come in here, is around how do we tap into the family travel? Mm -hmm. The whole uncertainty around confusion on the unabridged birth certificate came up very strongly in the two markets. Issue, yes. To say it is still an issue. We've had, mm -hmm. I mean, people came there with... Um, with um, articles mm. showing people that have been turned away from airports because they didn't have the requisite documents. Mm. So that that's the other thing that uh, came out. And the, the other thing which re relates to, obviously, um, perceptions around pricing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the two biggest markets are saying, you are pricing yourselves out of the uh, uh, market. 
because we're now looking at other destinations. And I'm sure my colleagues will give context to that. What was refreshing for me is the whole issue around find us new products. Get us new products. Because South Africa is not just uh, two, two provinces. You no. know? And we do know that for first timers, it's important for us to actually position a beautiful uh, you know, city, Cape Town, a beautiful uh, route, garden route, as well as uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kruger National Park. They're saying that clients, I mean, we've got, South Africa has got a huge percentage of repeat rate. So they're saying this repeat rate, tap into this opportunity, look at other products, look at other, you know, provinces in order to actually diversify what we're selling in market, which I think for me is a breath of fresh air. In fact, trade are, selling, are telling us we, we're not confident, we just don't have the product knowledge to be able to sell any other thing in South Africa. So for me, it says our work is cut out here. Mm. We need to actually look at how do we then educate our trade here? How do we build that product knowledge in South Africa? Because these are the guys who are actually doing business with trade in market. You know, there's a huge component of issues of sustainability. You know that we 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 faced with a trend of flight shaming. Mm -hmm. People are saying you guys are um, um, you long only recycle. You're a long haul destination. So there's a whole issue around carbon em emission. Mm -hmm. Secondly. You guys, uh, as a destination, only recycle about 9% of your plastic. Mm. You know, um, We're not sure what are you doing in terms of conservation and all that. And we know that we've got leading programs in the country Absolutely. on conservation, on biodiversity, yes. on what we're doing to actually integrate communities with you know, conservation. Mm. So these are some of the stories that we should be taking mm. out there. And, 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 mm. and for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a key lesson as to how do we take this narrative that we have because we're sitting on, on landmine of, 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 of information and knowledge about our destination and take it out there. But the trade, our own trade, be it being here in South Africa, has to learn about product yes. Yeah. Yes. for us to diversify yeah. and for, for this tourism that we're talking about to begin to touch everybody uh, is life. It cannot be just um, um, uh, you know, one, one pocket of, of our country because there's a whole notion around over tourism. Yeah. And if we're not careful, the very, very, um, 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 you know, gems that we have mm. will be faced with the issue of over tourism. And yet we've got vast land, we've got vast areas and lots of experiences to, to experience. Yes. So, so, so from the roadshow, just to add on what uh, Stambisa, um have, have said, um, I think it was a good turnout. We, we saw a lot of, um, you know, important trade people, CEOs of, uh, you know, companies that sends a lot of people to South Africa. Of course, the issue of safety and security came up, uh, but, you know, they brought it up in a different context. Remember that they also have interest in selling South Africa. It's part of their, you know, offering. Mm -hmm. So it came up and, um, you know, we talked about it at length. Uh, we talked about, you know, the fact that, you know, if you look at the ratio, you know, Crimes that impact, you know, tourists, you know, versus, you know, other countries, you know, it's still a problem, but, you know, we are not West, you know, like other countries. So, and then some of them did tell us that, uh, you know, don't focus too much on the issues of crime. It's, it's not a, a big issue. They said other destinations have same problems uh, and therefore, you know, it, it's, it's how you manage it. That's, that was just on criminality. But this has nothing to do with xenophobic and mm. things that are happening now. Mm. That's the next level. And that's something that, uh, you know, uh, really scares people because it's a target targeting foreigners. And mm. people look at look at themselves as foreigners when they come to the country. Mm. So there was, it was a good turnout. And I think the message was received positively. And just to echo what uh, Ste was saying, uh, the biggest thing was, what else do we sell? Mm. You know, what are the new products and experiences that we can sell? And it's something that we need to look Look at as, as, a, as a destination, introduce new products, new experiences, make sure that, you know, those products and experiences are market ready uh, and people are able to book them. They're able to come to the country and, and explore, you know, uh, you know, all provinces in the country. Mm -hmm. So so it was it was positive in, in, in that way. But, you know, of course, you know, it was the end of it. You know, the issues of xenophobic attacks were starting to, to flood the media. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people start to you know, to have more questions about, uh, you know, how we're handling things as a country. Mm -hmm. But as I said before, those are the issues that, you know, you want government to handle. Someone yes. talked about, you know, should we have tourism police? Mm -hmm. uh, it is something that other countries have done. We have put out, you know, 
certain cases. And I think the president did talk about certain cases when he was at Indaba this year, uh, saying that, you know, there are other places where there are tourism police. Uh, he did mention that, you know, we have our own tourism monitors uh, program, uh, which are coming through now through the Department of Tourism. So, you know, do, can we have, can we afford to have, a, you know, a, a special section to deal with only, you know, uh, tourist challenges? We would want to have that, but we know where we live. We know that, you know, there are other challenges in this country. We all know that recently there's been challenges of, uh, uh, you know, femicide and whatnot. And those are the challenges that, you know, may will receive, you know, top priority. Uh, but for us as an industry and from the Department of Tourism, I think that the implementation of Tourism Monitors Program, you know, it's a positive. It's something that we can talk about uh, to say that, you know, there is something that's being done, you know, in the country. There will be another app that will be introduced, uh, you know, uh, towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, they're busy working on it uh, to make sure that, you know, it provides, it may provide, you know, even private security, you know, so that, you know, you can click of a button, you can get someone to respond to, you know, to, to, to the issues that, uh, you know, or challenges that might be happening at an establishment or on the road. There's been a, also a great deal of interest in various provinces from the police departments in terms of uh, making sure that, uh, you know, they attend to, you know, certain issues that affect tourists. Uh, they've put together the task force to look into the matter. So that's a positive, you know, that's happening, you know, in, you know, in that space. But obviously, we, 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 we all know we've been marketing this country for many years. We've had issues of safety and security. We've operated very well, you know, within those, those challenges. And I think that we need to be positive and be resilient and continue to market, you know, uh, our, you know, our experiences and products very well because they sell a whole lot at stake. Mm -hmm. uh, let's remember that, you know, the industry has uh, about one and a half million people that are working in it. Mm -hmm. We need to defend it to make sure that, you know, we don't lose jobs. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we create some jobs. The situation right now doesn't help us at all. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're attending to it, you know, the way we're attending to it. And we're hoping that, you know, soon there will be measures from government that will be introduced to deal with these issues. So there is a sense of um, a willingness from government to collaborate with private sector. I mean, that has come through and it maybe hasn't um, come through in a mainstream press. It certainly come through in a tourism um, in, a, in tourism community. But um, that, can you tell us more about where government is looking to collaborate? You have touched on it, um, Chippy, when you have mentioned quite a few initiatives. Um, but what is the general sense from government when it comes to tourism, tourism as an export? You know, it's it's more than just about tourism as a product. It's tourism, how tourism feeds into um, the economy and grows jobs. And it's so much more than just um, an industry. Yeah. So, look, I mean, there, there, there is... Um... <clears throat> There's a great deal of interest, you know, from government now to, number one, let's talk about issues of immigration, mm. you know, to really sort out issues of visa waivers, mm. you know, I mean, constant communication with the Department of Home Affairs. Mm -hmm. There will be the next wave of potential few other countries that are going to receive visa waivers that have a market potential, you know, for us in terms of the arrival figures. We are working on that. Uh, it's something that's on the table. There's also a very robust discussion about an abridged birth certificate mm -hmm. that is happening. And, um, you know, all I can say is that we're looking at a permanent solution, you know, to deal with that matter once and for all. Uh, it is something that, uh, you know, I have received feedback from the DG of Home Affairs. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on it. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we'll have good news very, very soon. Um, you know, maybe there will be an announcement. Let me let me leave it there. You know, <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to preempt things, mm. but we 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 have been working behind closed doors to mm. to to deal with that issue. We we've listened to the guys when we went, you know, uh, to to Europe, Central Europe, and the UK. It is still a problem. Mm. Uh, we need to deal with the problem head on. Yes. We have raised it. I've already raised it with uh, the authorities. They have gotten back to me it looks like it's going to move to the positive direction. Uh, and there may be something that we're going to announce, you know, very, very soon. So that's where we are on that issue. Mm 
And hopefully we will have something that we can all celebrate on and it can send a positive message across the world. Mm -hmm. so, so we're working on that. There are issues of transport, you know, and the transport regulations. Yes. We are working on that. Um, there's a new director general at the Department of Transport. I've reached out. I'm waiting for a meeting to, to get confirmation of the meeting. We will deal with it. We will win at the end because we have a strong case as a tourism industry. Mm -hmm. so, so there is willingness from government, you know, to come to the table. You would have seen the paper that the the minister of uh, uh, the finance minister put out in terms of the economic discussion mm -hmm. tourism featured very prominently the the issues around you know uh, the budget for sa tourism uh, it, it's important and i saw you know someone saying here that um, you know we need to counter negative messages with a lot of positive messages mm -hmm. but equally so we need the, the right amount of budget to be able to do that uh, when you have, you know, a billion plus budget, if you turn it into dollars, it hardly makes a uh, hundred million US dollars and you're operating in international markets. If we are to respond appropriately, we need to have the budget that correspond with, with, with how we respond appropriately. So it is something that, you know, we have welcome to say, you know, you, there has to be enough budget mm -hmm. to be able to respond to these things. Mm -hmm. um, there are is the issues around the brand itself. As, as, as South Africa brand, mm. I think the president have acknowledged it. Uh, we have communicated that, you know, the brand needs to be strengthened. We need to make sure that all, you know, missions abroad, you know, are sending positive messages. The likes of Brand SA are sending positive messages, DECO, you know, ourselves. And of course, ourselves as a trade, we need to be sending positive messages to counter negative messages. Mm. So there is a lot of interest from all of us and, and we need to pull together, yes. you know, fully as a country. And, and we have assured government that from our side, we'll pull together as an industry mm. uh, to, to come to the table and make sure that, you know, whatever needs to be done is done, mm. you know, for the benefit of tourism. Mm. But we need other stakeholders within government to come together, to pull together, mm. send positive messages and make sure that, you know, we start to rebuild the brand of our country. So, so the, obviously, the question is: is how do we actually prevent this from happening? And just to support uh, what industry is saying, because we we do say that it's not the the, the industry only that needs to spread positive, um, you know, messaging. Uh, we're going to use uh, obviously using positive PR. There's a huge component around what content goes out there. Yes, and and I think th this is a feedback that we got from both our media, uh, you know, partners in market as well as trade. How do we leverage of uh, you know the good narrative or good stories that are happening in our country using those um, uh, you know th those channels, me meaning media channels and, and and trade? But most importantly, um, we have recently as SA Tourism uh, appointed a chief marketing officer whose, whose uh, role uh, basically would be to ensure what uh, Chifu is talking about. How do we then re-energize re, re, re the brand, mm -hmm. the tourism brand, most mm -hmm. importantly, mm -hmm. so that it becomes that brand, uh, that sought after brand uh, that people are looking for or travelers are looking for. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is if we don't also focus, uh, do a lot of focus on, on, on domestic tourism, mm -hmm. uh, we're not able to, we are not able to, you know, create that sustainability mm. because looking at international travel uh, uh, or tourist only mm. is just not sustainable. We've got jobs to sustain. And also, I believe that if we actually deal with domestic tourism, grow it and ensure that our people actually understand it, our people actually, you know, uh, uh, travel that, that destination, they become better hosts. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we're trying now uh, uh, to do. But the most important thing is how do we create that compelling tourism brand uh, prop proposition so that we ensure that uh, it is communicated uh, you know, uh, appropriately. The most important thing that always comes up is what is, living in a digital era, what is your digital uh, uh, you know, strategy as, yes. a, as, a, as a country? So these are some, you know, some of the things that we'll be putting together, a, a digital strategy where we're going to now take the content and, you know, and take it out there. Mm -hmm. But I need to mention that currently we do have um, um, uh, platforms which we use, uh, which are both internationally um, and, and domestically uh, you know, focused. Mm -hmm. As SA Tourism, we own two trade shows. We've got Indab. Mm -hmm. Africa's Travel Indab is one of the biggest shows in the, in the continent. Mm -hmm. That's where the world actually comes into South Africa. It's held in Durban every May. 
you've got international media mm. coming to South Africa. Mm. So that's the opportunity that we have mm. to actually give, create a narrative mm. that we want, create the perception that we want as a, as a destination. Mm. In February, year in, year out, we host Meetings Africa here in Senton. The entire continent is here. The world is here. Mm. That's another platform that we can use to actually build the narrative that we want. Mm. We also participate in other international trade shows. Mm. Um, you know, biggest trade shows in, in, in UK coming up now in November, a world travel market. Mm. As South Africa, we're going to participate. We're taking our trade with. Mm. But the most important thing is how do we then take media mm. and, and leverage off the existence of global media, uh, global media presence at that mm. platform? to tell a better story about South Africa. Mm. So I think there are opportunities um, that we have as a destination that we can actually collaborate both. I, I don't believe that it's a government issue. Mm. I believe that you've got to actually work in a co much more collaborated uh, fashion to actually yes. deal with this thing. Yes. Um, I do think, and it, I mean, it's a suggestion from Tourism Update's point of view, but um, perhaps we could do a series on educating the trade and because it's great to talk about, okay, SA Tourism has these platforms that are available or there's these campaigns, there's these global campaigns, but how do I as Natasha, an operator, a small operator who's trying to build my business, how do I tap into that and how do I use um, my big brothers um, and how can we work together? How can Big brothers work with small brothers to to promote tourism, um, and it would be it would be great to do something like that. You, you are right. Uh, I mean, if you look at the work that we do in the tourism trading council, we've got product capacity building as as a function. Um, I know we we've, we've just we we just started with it. But the most important thing is how do we identify the small products? How do we identify the new entrants into the market and put together a proper, uh, you know, um, um, what you call capacity building program so that they understand one, they understand all the markets, including domestic and including regional travel, you know, from, from the rest of the continent. We really have to actually uh, invest in product capacity building, ensuring that they understand um, you know, how to play in the space. Mm. They understand who's coming, what they're looking for, how to market themselves, how to position themselves. Yes. And it's something that we we spoke about coming from uh, the roadshow, that we really have to invest in that. And it's it's one of the, you know, actions that we've, 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 we've come up with, uh, you know, from the roadshow. Mm. So we need to put together those plans and then mm. identify these products and start training them. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think there's massive potential in terms of um, just learning how to be proactive in your communication strategy um, as a as an operator, um, as a tourism operator, and not necessarily always just reactive. I think that's a big part of the problem is that when bad things happen and it makes headlines because people, because newspapers like bad news, mm -hmm. um, and then you have to be reactive in your messaging. If there's a PR strategy to be proactive um, and it helps people feel empowered. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think I think just another point from from my side. I've been looking at a number of the sort of questions and just to come in on 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 sort of various issues. Uh, you know, I think, and I mean, this is not a small point I'm making. This is this is this roadshow that we've just been on is seriously the first time we've actually gone in and done this together. And I think we 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 were exposed to a lot. We we saw all the top operators in in central europe and in and in the uk but it allows us as a as as, as a collective that's sa tourism and the tbcsa to reflect on this and we've we've literally just got back we need to digest this and but i i just want to give the people out there a sense that i think in terms of move, moving forward what we will be seeing and it will be discernibly different to the past. Is a joint approach to these, and how we actually how we actually respond. Mm -hmm. Historically, we've done things independently. I think we've done things relatively well, but we've been working um, relatively apart from 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 one another. And in terms of seeing the issues and developing a proper action plan that can respond to these, these are going to take these 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 happen at different levels. Mm -hmm. And we are in the process, and this will be an ongoing process of actually refining, formulating um, uh, responses to these to these issues, and then getting back very importantly, and undertaking we gave 
to the uh, to the to the trade in particular, we will get back into those markets within the next eight months to actually give feedback on 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 the progress we've made. Equally, and and we're having this webinar today because of the particular dire situation that 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 is that has arisen in the last last two weeks. We 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 will also commit to a national roadshow where we get out and interact directly um, at 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 uh, meetings in in key centres in the country where we can actually interact and discuss mm -hmm. these issues with people in the industry and 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 indeed take 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 input. There's been a wealth of comment that sort of come in as we're doing the webinar. We need to digest that as well and 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 to be able to sort of feed back. But it but it is a new approach, guys. And I, I you know I'm I'm particularly excited by it because I think that you know together we are we are we are we are um a lot stronger. On some of the more important so there's been some specific issues raised. There was one issue raised on not focusing on an app that focus on focuses on security things. Just to you know perhaps educate people who, who aren't aware of what the SATSA app is. The SATSA app is a is a trade to trade communication. So it goes out, SATSA members and every single employee can download the app. So if the if the CEO's off sick or you know not 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 in the office, everybody can get real time information. It can be updates on visa regulations. It can be details of uh, security uh, of 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 uh, uh, service delivery protests on on sort of key routes. That then allows um, either the operator or the lodge or the guest house to get real-time information, either to the tour leader, the bus driver, or if you have an ability to communicate directly with FIT guests to your to your FIT to your FIT guests. So it's not a it, the, the, in no way does this then interact directly with with the uh, with the um, tourists. So you know. Um, the app is um, it's, it's downloaded on the on the iStore or wherever Samsung people get their apps from. So um, it's 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 uh, it's available there. And then I just has to liaise with the office in terms of the membership um, credentials to get that to get that sort of thing uploaded. On on another just a practical level, what what we what we did in responding, and this was going back to. Just after the Mount Nelson issue, as as um, as as sets in conjunction with the TBCSA, we we surveyed members and we got we got 480 responses, which was which was which was incredible. But as part of our initiatives, we we also discovered that there are areas around social media that are just unregulated and we're not managing well. There are we identified 60, 60 sites where people are going and posing questions about travel to South Africa. And because nobody's managing that, like I'm a single woman coming to KZN, will I be safe? And instead of a positive response, we get the scaremongers coming and actually saying, hell no, don't yes. you know do that. So we've put a call out to our members. It's an ongoing program. And I want to appeal to all the all the participants please liaise with us so what we've done is is adopt a space adopt a social media space where our companies go and manage one or two sites on a daily basis and when there are questions of this nature we are putting positive responses and we are occupying that social media space proactively and positively that's wonderful okay. And, and, and i think it's important for us to mention that the global roadshow is not a silver bullet it's it's not we're not embarking on a global roadshow and then uh, uh, you know hoping that everything will be sorted out. Mm. There are multiple ways of, of of doing things. Roadshow is but one of the things that we said. Look, let's go there. Let's understand mm. the issue around hosting media. We do it all the time. Mm. The issue of holding or hosting a foreign correspondence. We do it all the time. Where we bring them here, they actually write articles uh, back and they they actually disseminate information back in in in, in their mm. own countries. But we felt that we can't leave it to the foreign correspondents and the journalists only. We have to actually go there and listen to what the trade is saying as well. So I don't think we have to look at the whole issue around the global roadshow as just the, the, the thing. Mm. And I think the, the other thing to mention is that these are not strategies. These are actually actions. We are actually going out there and doing rather than sitting in boardrooms and coming up with grand strategies and we don't have time to execute. Mm. Here we are saying... There are multiple initiatives that are going on that are being executed at the moment. We've got the safety monitors initiative. You've got the app from Sansa that is running. You've got the industry saying we're going to now um, 
um, uh, invest in, in technology to help us with, with, with this. We've got the roadshow where we're saying we're going out there to actually meet media and, and, and trade. We've got now a communication strategy that is put together to say how do we communicate positive um, you know, uh, content out there for people to know what South Africa is all about and actually talk about good things which are happening. Yes. So I don't think it's 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 a it's a it's a question of us waiting to write a big strategy and there's a big revolt. Mm -hmm. It is how do we then continue to do this? Because there's a sense of agency in this thing. 30% unemployment rate. Yes. E economy is not doing well. Yes. So we need to actually turn things around as quickly mm -hmm. as we can. And we've got no time to sit with with, with big document mm -hmm. strategies. And I think it is also important that we are talking about the good things we're doing. And yep. I think that you can do wonderful things, but if no one knows you're doing them, um, it's mm. it's wasted. It's a wasted marketing opportunity. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take your closing thoughts. We have run over time. If anybody has anything to add. Look, I think that... Um, we, we shouldn't be despondent. We shouldn't be negative about our, you know, our destination or our country. And we should be able to know what are the things that we can solve ourselves. There are things that we can solve and that we are solving. These are the things that we can do that we have a control over, that we're working hard on those to make sure that, you know, we're able to remove them. And then there are certain things that we know we need to lobby government to do i.e. issues of safety and security is a competence of government to make sure that the country is safe. Um, and we have put our voices up to say, you know, it's important that, you know, issues of safety and security are dealt with. And, uh, you know, that was reflected even on the, you know, Minnesota Finance paper about the issues of safety of tourists. It was reflected there. Yes, there has to be actions around the issues of safety and security because we can't just talk about it. But there has to be actions from the relevant authorities. What we are not going to do is to keep quiet, you know, when there are certain things that affect, you know, the livelihood of, of the industry. You know, we're not going to keep quiet about that. We're going to raise those issues sharply uh, with the relevant authorities to make sure that they are addressed. So there is a, a will to address these issues. And I think that, you know, given the fact that, you know, we are, as a country, we're facing a whole lot of social challenges. We've got unemployment at high, high rates, 40% uh, in some areas. And, uh, you know, we have people that are desperate. And if we move back and we, we go to our corners and we start to throw stones to our own industry, it's not going to help us. So we need to, you know, come out and be positive and rebuild our industry um, and make sure that, you know, we go back to the glorious days where, you know, we can have tourists coming in. Issues of safety and security are important. They are number one. I believe that if we can solve issues of safety and security, we should be able, you know, in the next year to really get, you know, huge amounts of tourists coming into the country. We do know that that's one of the biggest, you know, challenges that we have as a country. However, it's a challenge that, you know, we can only solve through government intervention in, on a larger scale. We are doing certain things on a smaller scale to make sure that we protect tourists that are visiting the areas. We do know about the challenges that we had in Mpumalanga. We attended to those challenges mm -hmm. and other challenges that we have around the country of safety and security. We are attending to those challenges. Mm -hmm. And we have put our, you know, our hand forward as, as a private sector and as a TBCSA to say we are willing to assist wherever, you know, we can assist mm -hmm. uh, wherever it's possible for us to do. But we are never going to stop raising the issues with government mm -hmm. and also trying to get solutions from government. Mm -hmm. To talk and have papers and strategies and whatnot, you know, we've put that aside. We are now in the mode of doing. We need to implement, we need to do, we need to produce results, and that's what we're doing. And the, just to sum up everything that we're doing, uh, so that if, if anybody needs to remember anything, is what is it that we're doing to ensure that we see growth, we, we, we actually win uh, in terms of the growth potential that we've, we've identified? Let's focus on those growth markets that we've seen. I've already mentioned them, those top seven. It doesn't mean that we're not playing in others. We're going to play in those, but we know the key ones that are gonna give us uh, the, the return that we want. We're going to do, secondly, we're going to look at how do we then invigorate our brand where we continue to inspire travel to South Africa and within um, you know, South Africa, and then overcoming the issue of perception um, you know, around that destination. The third area is how do we then deploy tactical commercial activities? Because talking is one thing, 
but we we need those technical you know commercial activities that to boost you know a, a, a travel those deal driven campaigns and other things that ensures that people actually book and, and and come to our country the fourth element is how do we inspire we have to continue inspiring and and incentivizing issues of domestic tourism that's why the initiatives that we're doing in the domestic tourism space like your travel week is around incentivizing travel so that people can begin to travel the country and understand that um, um, it is accessible and it, it's their country. The number five is how do we maximize industry partnership and collaboration? And this is what is happening right here. We're maximizing this partnership with, 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 with industry because we do believe that this is a work that cannot be done by government only. We need collaboration of, uh, you know, with private sector and the citizens uh, uh, you know, you know, of this country. And the last thing is around how do we ensure that we remove the barriers to travel through government support? And that's what we were talking about. Issues around visa, issues around um, uh, you know, safety and security. So these are the six key areas that we have sort of neatly tied this thing. All activities that we do are actually linked to these six areas. Fantastic. David? Yeah, thanks. I think Stu summed that up uh, very eloquently. I think that uh, there's certainly a framework there, but there, there, there is um, at least, you know, within our team and the, the sort of road chat team, there's a sense that, you know, we we have, have listened to the market and I think it's very important that we, we go and do it. We need to deepen the debate um, with our trade um, here, in, here in, yeah. in South Africa, but there's certainly, and there've been some amazing um, uh, points being raised, um, and you know, not all of them can can be, you know, sort of shown on on the webinar screen. And I just want to thank, on behalf of of Stir Chief and myself, I just want to thank everybody who's 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 participated in the uh, webinar and for for the for the very constructive way that they've uh, posed questions and 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 comments. For anybody who's missed it, it will be available through Tourism up, um, yes. Update on on online so that if anybody's missed it we can we can go back to it but yes. there is a sense guys that they, they that 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 we need to do things differently mm -hmm. that you know the same old same old approach is is uh, mm -hmm. going to get us nowhere and if you try harder and you're going nowhere you just get nowhere quicker than you were going to get there before so there's certainly um some 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 good ideas and we need to we need to refine these we need to sift them and we need to take the ones that 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 are practical and implement and implementable and 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 get on and get on and do it but as i say i just want to come back to the point that there is a very solid public private uh, foundation that has been forged and it puts us in a much stronger position to tackle these issues than we've ever been before thank you Great. Um, thank you. Thank you so much to our panel for um, sharing your feedback and your expertise. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in and participating. As David said, the webinar will be available on demand um, on through Tourism Update. So look, look out for that. Until next time. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>